What's up YouTube fam, Robbie C here. Today we are back with another clinic that I had the chance to teach over for the Rookie Series that we're hosting here in Birmingham, Alabama. And since this tournament series is a four-parter, I'm having the opportunity to sort of start at the basket and work our way backwards. So working on putting in the first clinic. Today we actually get the chance to talk about upshots and play a little game or a fun twist on a game that you may be able to take to your Frisbee circles and your disc golf community to help you improve at upshots just a little bit at a time. But I wanna give a quick warning before we dive into the video and that is that some of you who have a particular love for a certain disc might feel a little targeted, but I promise stick around to the end of the video and you'll see that I truly believe that this disc does have a place in the disc golf world. But before going much further, I gotta ask, Christy, how are you doing today? Are you having a good one? So catch me if I fall. I see so many beginners who get to 100, 150 feet and in, and instead of taking the two strokes that it should take them to throw their up shot, put the putt in the basket, and call the hole over, they're taking three, four, five strokes because it's almost like when I get this close to the basket, I am overwhelmed by it. It's not a full shot, but it's not a putt either. Am I doing a jump putt? Am I doing, what am I doing at this distance? And so we get overwhelmed on what we're going to throw there. And also, what happens if I'm 50 feet away from the basket? If I'm 75 feet away from the basket? For a lot of you, that 50 foot range is the most frustrating part of your game because it's longer than I can putt but I consistently find myself at that 50 foot range and I just can't seem to score from that spot. I wanna teach you a tool that you can use to aggressively try to throw it in from 50 feet, from 75 feet. You're gonna see here in a minute, from 125 feet, the more comfortable you get with this shot. So suddenly you're stepping up to these 365 foot holes like we have today and by show of hands, we're not trying to shame anyone here. How many of you are looking at a 365 foot hole and telling yourself there's absolutely no way I can get to that basket? Perfect, yeah. Guys, people talk about distance all the time on the internet and of course, everybody in those form review forums throws 450 feet and they just want a little bit more and they throw 450 feet like that. And it's like, no, I don't think you actually do, brother. What if I told you a 365 foot hole, you throw 250 feet, we got 115 feet left to the basket. I wanna teach you how to have confidence in that. Now today is gonna to be a fun day for you guys because there is, if you've never played this course before, we're technically in the woods, but not really. So this wind is really gonna mess with some people. So when we're talking about approaches, I wanna start by the easiest and most reliable shot in the game, hyzer. Hyzer is when you take that outside edge of the disc and you put it down. That's gonna cause the disc to make that crescent moon shape. Now. A lot of people like to lean into hyzers and they think you can only throw hyzers with overstable discs. While you can do that, you can also throw understable discs on, an, on a hyzer. And you know what it's gonna do when you do that? It's going to flip, which is that ever elusive shot that so many people talk about. The easiest distance shot is the hyzer flip. So hyzers, when we put that outside edge of the disc down, you can do this with every disc in your bag you can throw on a hyzer. Now the reason hyzers are the most reliable shot is because let's say that I'm trying to throw to this basket right over there. If I'm throwing a flat or a straight shot, I'm going to have to worry about if I throw it flat, did I throw it, it maybe too understable of a disc so now it wants to turn over to the right. Maybe it's too overstable of a disc so it wants to fade out to the left. Maybe I didn't give it enough power so it's gonna land short. Maybe I gave it too much power, now it's gonna go long. Four different factors that I have to consider on throwing that shot. Whereas if I throw a hyzer with a disc that I know is going to come back, I have to worry about one thing. I have to worry about how far am I throwing it? Because if I'm throwing a disc on hyzer, I can throw it all the way out there and let it crash back in. So a lot of you, when you're throwing these up shots, you're trying to throw straight to the basket, shortest line possible, when we need to start thinking about some hyzers. Now the beautiful thing of why we describe a hyzer as outside edge down, is because if I'm throwing a forehand and I try to do that, looks a little weird, right? But I can throw a hyzer on a forehand because I just take this outside edge and I put it down. You can throw hyzer forehands, you can throw hyzer backhands. Now you can do this with a variety of Frisbees. It's a little disc, you probably haven't heard me talk about it before if you've ever been around me, it's called a pig. Fantastic disc, it's an overstable putt and approach disc. 
What the overstable disc means is that it wants to lean into whatever flight path I'm putting it on even more. So when I want it to be on hyzer and I put an overstable disc on hyzer, it's going to really hyzer. So there's a beauty in that. But what we're gonna talk about today when we dive further is not overstable putt and approach discs because this is simple. This is English 101. First thing you're gonna learn. You wanna throw easy approach shots, grab an overstable putt and approach disc and swing it out there. So I wanna try to put my money where my mouth is and I'm gonna throw, we're gonna move a little bit. I have two cones set up. I've got one cone set up at 125 feet. I've got one cone set up at 100 feet. And I wanna demonstrate how we can throw multiple shots, multiple approaches. So come on over with me. I want you to stand on this fence line for a brief second. You can leave your stuff there. We'll be right back. The beautiful part about this shot and what you wanna do when you're learning up shots, when you're learning approaches, is doing it in a wide open field doesn't really necessarily teach us a lot, right? Because I'm not always going to have a wide open look at the basket. We're not living in Neverland where you know we're never growing up. Peter Pan's here to save the day. Just kidding, he's actually the villain. Captain Hook's the best. So <laughs> we are looking at this and you can see I have really three and a half options, right? I've got the two gaps to the right of the basket. I've got a huge gap to the left of the basket and I've got one right at it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my overstable putt and approach disc and I'm gonna try to throw the first one on a hyzer, put that outside edge down, and I'm gonna try to go out the right gap, and I failed. But you know what's beautiful? That is right next to the basket. Because when I put it on hyzer, I know it's gonna come back. All I have to worry about is my distance. It's going to be controlled every time. Now, if I wanna go forehand, I'm going on the outside edge. So I'm putting that outside edge down on the basket, and I'm gonna throw out, Boom, now see that one, I went too far. And we're gonna explain that circle around the basket here in a second for when you're practicing your up shots. Now this last one's gonna be a little trickier because I have an overstable front and approach disc and I'm trying to go right at the basket. So when I'm here, and that one I actually did the first line. I'm so good at repeating what I said. Now, I wanna talk about a disc that a lot of you have heard about. It's called a Berg. How many of you currently have a Berg in your bag? Awesome, okay, fantastic. So here's why people love the Berg. Because touch is not a part of a beginner's game. When we learn to throw a disc, so often we get used to yeeting that thing full power all the time that the Berg is a disc designed to have zero glide. This thing wants to go out and drop to the ground at all times. You wanna throw a 500 foot shot with a Berg, you need 800 feet of power. You wanna throw a 200 foot shot with a Berg, you need 300 feet of power. People love it because it is like training wheels that you can put on your disc golf game. Now here's the thing about training wheels. If I ever wanna win a race, do you see anyone in the Tour de France with training wheels on? No, do you think someone riding in the Tour de France could ride a bike with training wheels? They could ride a bike with training wheels, they don't choose to. So what I wanna teach you to do is, I wanna teach you how to throw up shots like the Berg does without actually throwing a Berg. Because at the end of the day, when I throw this Berg, it's going to do what it does extremely well. But then it hits its ceiling and eventually the training wheels have to come off. So we're going to learn with another disc that is beautiful, that I love, and it's called the Polecat. Now the Polecat, super weird Frisbee. Has a very flat profile, as you can see. Looks a lot more like a jar to a peanut butter lid, uh, right? Makes a great roller disc because it's actually a wheel. Uh, if you, once again, you run out of training wheels on your bike for your child or things like that, grab a Polecat, punch a hole in the middle, you are good to go. But why I like the Polecat is because it is also a one speed like the Berg. So we're going to teach you a throwing style that works really well with this. Now, when I'm throwing a backhand shot, there are two powerful levers and a pendulum that I'm using or like a pivot point for the arm. When I'm throwing a backhand shot, I have this is a power lever and this is a power and it pivots around the elbow. See that? This is power, power. Now how we're going to adjust that is we still want two, two powerful levers, but we want to pull this one out. 
I'm going to take my hand and put it above my elbow. Notice what's happened. Do I still have two levers? Yes. I have one lever here and I have one lever here. And where's that rotation point? Right in the wrist. So by keeping my hand above my elbow, I'm going to draw a line from A to B, A to B, and boom. Now I have this shot. From 125 feet, I should hopefully be able to take this disc, keep the hand above the elbow, hand above the elbow, and I should hopefully be able more than 125 feet, hand above the elbow. And that's without me bringing more power levers into play. The beautiful part about this as well, if I need more power and I can't get this from 125 feet, which I'm gonna be, I'm gonna tell you straight up, your first time doing this, you are not gonna feel that. I have over a year of practice doing this at this point. You get more power, bring the power lever back into play. I simply lower the hand back closer to the elbow and that's gonna bring more power into play. So how we're gonna practice this today is another key part of this is gonna be grip. So we're gonna head back over to your bags and I want everybody to grab a disc. Another fun challenge. How many of you, since you started playing disc golf, have tried throwing a Frisbee lid? Okay. How many of you went really well? Yeah, no. Uh, if you were try, if I were to try to describe an ultimate Frisbee lid, I would describe it as more understable than like, I don't know, your in-law or something like that. Like it is, uh, it is insanely understable. So the beauty of this disc is that it requires minimal power. We need to get ourselves out of the thought process that everything has to be a power shot. Once again, why the bird finds its limits is because in order to get it to fly at all, I have to hit it with some power. And then it dummy checks me and breaks and stops. And I realize I'm making eye contact, not intentionally for my bird thrower. Once again, it's good, you're learning. Uh, so this, if you try to overpower this Frisbee, it's not gonna go well. It's gonna burn over to the right. And there are tons of amateur players who are like, oh, I can't throw this disc because I, it just burns over for me. How far do you throw? Oh, like 225, awesome. Okay, I can hand that disc to Garrett Gerthy and watch him get a full flight out of it. One of you is doing something wrong. And I'm gonna guess it's not the touring professional. So we don't have to throw everything with power. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this grip and there is a video on the internet, a picture on the internet more so, of someone showing their hand like this and they have a red line between these two fingers. And everyone says, you wanna throw nose down, you need to take the disc, put it between those two fingers and boom, you are good. It's the right start, but it's not all the way there. So we're gonna talk about a back-loaded grip. A lot of people when they're trying to get power, they need more of a front-loaded grip where there's pinch and rotation coming out of it. A back-loaded is super point and click. So what I want you to do is, I want you to take this pinky and I want you to put it in the rim. Put it in the rim. Then I want you to take the next finger and stack it on top. And then your third finger stacks on top of that. So you're gonna feel like, notice how this finger is still pointing at you. It's like a claw. Everyone, Toy Story fans, the claw. <laughs> so this claw, this is gonna try to get all three of these fingers to function as one point. Now, this last finger, this index finger, simply wraps around the front. Now, if you notice, I'm throwing this, if I try to hold this up, it's pretty nose up like the angle of it. As I'm looking, I can read the top of the disc very easily, okay? That's fine. Because for this shot, we want the shot to be thrown nose up a little bit. Because what it does is when we throw it nose up, it's gonna be very floaty, and we can throw it right at the basket, and it's gonna put automatic air brakes on the disc to get it to slow down. And there's another disc out there that people love because it just automatically slows down. We've talked about it it's the Berg. So by using this grip and pointing nose up like this, I can throw a shot and cause it to be nose up 
and it's gonna stall and stop. But then later on, when I wanna actually throw this far, I can adjust my grip and throw it nose down and get significantly more distance out of it instead of this touchy upshot. See the difference between those? Now, the last key piece of this, besides, there's three key pieces. The power grip, the, the claw grip, then we have the hand above the elbow. We're drawing A to B. You're almost tracing across your shoulders when you do this. Boom, tracing across your shoulders and you're throwing. But how do I finish? Because a lot of people are gonna wanna finish this way. Finish and fling that disc up. In order to really drive that, we're gonna think about the thumb driving into the center of the disc and pushing down. Pushing down. The thumb plays an active role at the end. Now this is something, like I said, that's gonna feel really, really odd because it, it's not something you're doing before, but I promise it's gonna help you. Now I keep a polecat in my car at all times so that when I am early to a course, whenever I need to stretch, I can simply play catch with a polecat. How many of you currently have a polecat in your bag? Jason's the man. Cooper's the man. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I figured that was the case. So Ben's giving me permission to start a little later here. We are all gonna practice this, but you didn't bring your own polecats. So thankfully, I did. So, here's what I want you to do. I want you to grab a partner, and I want you to grab a polecat, and I want you to spread out in this field and get about 40 to 50 feet away from each other, and you're gonna be throwing these shots to one another. Some of you have glitches I saw. We'll get, a bit, we'll get to that in a second, but grab your polecat, grab a partner, and let's play some catch. All right, questions as people are doing this. What feels weird? Because it feels not bad, because sometimes different always can feel bad. What's feeling weird? Because if there's any questions, I want to make sure we're addressing those. If you have it. Up like this, I feel like I'm throwing down into the ground. Yeah, so I wouldn't say you're going above your head. Okay. Top of the shoulders at most. That's still above your shoulders. So okay. it's, it's not a, that's a great question. It's not up here, it's here. Do you always face the target or turn away from it? Great question, great question. So. It is, it's sort of a hybrid. We're not facing our target directly because that makes that really tough. Once again, I don't have a lot of power, but I'm also not fully turned to the target to where I'm tempted to come with the reach back. Because if I, if I go back like this, notice hand above elbow has been lost. Boop, boop, boop. See that? If I go into the full reach back, this is a soft shot. It is not a power shot. If anything, think about the acceleration happening here. The acceleration all happens out in front of you. It is a flick of the wrist is the, the verbiage that my coach and I use when we're talking about this, is that it's subtle, subtle, boom. You're hitting, you're coming through, and it's finishing towards the target. By the time you're finishing towards the target, the disc is almost already out of your hands. It's, let's say it's finishing at like 11 o'clock if you're looking at a clock. It explodes at 11 and finishes to one. See that? Do it one more time for this side. It hits here, finishes to here. Make sense? All right, now here's how we're gonna do the last part of this game. You and your partner have formed a synergy that is unbreakable. And we are gonna test the bonds of your partnership because you are about to challenge someone else to a game of Frisbee Jam. Can Jam is played on the beach, and thankfully, the good Lord provided the wind we needed today. They were basically simulating the beach. So, you're gonna grab your polecat, and each team is gonna volunteer one bag. You'll notice there are four squares, or there's squares all over. They're not very good squares. I'm not good with architecture, or shapes, really. I did poor in that category in kindergarten. So, you're gonna place, one of you is gonna put your bag in one of the squares, and then you're gonna put a partner on both sides. So can jam, traditionally, when I throw the disc towards my partner, they can smack it in. This is not a throwing or a catching sport, and I don't want anyone jam like getting a finger jammed or something before we play this round. So you get three points if you hit the bag. You get one point for landing your Frisbee inside of the square. 
You're gonna go back and forth and I'll call time when we're all set up. My final thoughts for this shot. Some of you, how many, like, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. How many of you are like, wow, that feels like something I could do, but I hate the pole cat. It's okay, you're not gonna offend me, like I said. So, pay multiple people. Pole cat, weird feeling disc. I'll be the first to admit that. Now the beauty of this is that I started off by absolutely trashing the Berg. Once again, if you are looking for an easy way to get started in throwing this shot, the Berg can help you a lot because you have to focus a lot less on all the things we talked about and it's gonna do it for you naturally. So if you wanna add this shot to your bag immediately, I would encourage you, check out a Berg. Uh, so, all the comments that are going to roast me for how much I blasted this thing are not going to make it to the end, and all of you can defend me in the comments that I said you should go get a Berg if you want to add the shot immediately. But, there are other discs that this is possible with. There is, we have the pole cap that we talked about. You have the Glitch is an alternative to it. Glitch is a lightweight disc. Feels a lot more like a normal disc golf disc. Very easy to accomplish this exact same throw with the glitch. You have the Rattler by Discraft. It is like a mini Discraft Ultra Star. This is what they were trying to design when they made this. So another valid option. You have the Hydrogen Loft. Uh, this is not a good feeling one. There are better feeling lofts, but it's the only one that I own. So brought it. Uh, the reason I brought all of these here is because if you're like, man, I didn't like the pole cat, I'm curious. Before you head out to your round, I'm gonna have all these here. Feel free to grab them, hold on to them, and get a feel for them because they all feel a little different. That way you can be like, oh, that one actually really settles in my hand. Another great example, the Sonic. Gary Gerthy uses this disc a lot. Has a very odd rim, but it has a really cool little track on the top of it, little groove that you can put your thumb on. Feels a lot, it's fastback. Feels like a really easy, like a disc you would get if you went to a convention. And they're like, hey, this is Allman Insurance Brothers. Come check us out. Uh, like. There you go. Uh, so, the Sonic, great option. Now, the last thing I want to tell you is that you don't just have to do this shot with these lid type frisbees. You can do this with any type of disc. You can do it with a distance driver. It's going to be a little difficult, but you can even take a disc like the Trash Panda Inner Core and you can simply line it up, have the mechanics. and float it next to the basket. You can take an XT Nova. Float it up next to the basket. It doesn't matter. I can ask you to hand me a disc out of your bag, not know how it flies, how it feels. By applying this grip, this swing of the technique, I promise you it's gonna teach you how to throw the shot consistently over and over again. For as many of you, maybe you didn't get all the points you wanted in Frisbee Jam, but I doubt many of you were sailing 75 and 100 feet in the wrong direction. You don't have to land inside that circle because you can make putts outside that circle, but it would be way easier if you could hit all of your approaches inside that circle. My hope is when you go out on the course today, if you find yourself 50, 75, 100 feet away from the basket, rather than having to do some wild jump putt that you have no control over, make that little fork grip, line it up, Toss it to the bag. Let it sit under the basket, make your putt, take your three, walk away. Awesome, appreciate it. Thank you guys for coming out. Like I said, I have all the lids right here. Feel free to grab them, check them out. They're gonna be a little uh, dirty, uh, but that's fine. Just wipe the dirt off, so. So that's gonna wrap things up for today's video. For the Berg lovers, I hope that you don't hate me entirely, because I really do believe that this disc has a place out there. And especially if you wanna add this type of shot to your game immediately, definitely check out the Berg. It has a variety of plastics that all feel really good. And as for hand feel, I gotta be honest, this feels way better in my hand than a polecat, so I understand that this feels odd and that lots of you may have a better or more comfortable time throwing the Berg, throwing the Glitch, things like that. So truly, you gotta get out there and find the disc that does what you want it to do and also feels comfortable and natural in your hand. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I hope that you guys get out there and play some Frisbee Jam yourself, having a great time with it and it helps you dial in those up shots and who knows. Maybe we're gonna start throwing in quite a few more from the 100 foot range, from the 125 foot range, just by putting a little bit of time and effort into this shot right here. In the meantime, I hope you have an amazing rest of your week and that you make it fantastic for someone else too. Thank you so much for watching as always. But for now, we're gonna leave you with the birdie.